Okay, so next we're going to do subtraction and other bases. It's essentially the same, except now we're going to talk about borrowing. So instead of carrying over, like we have too many when we're adding, we have to take away, right, because we're borrowing. But let's just go ahead and recall subtraction in base 10. So subtraction in base 10, you can recall, is let's say it's 13, uh, no, let's, let's do 53 minus 7. Okay, so when I do 53 minus 7, recall that because this digit above the second value, the minuend, because the menu, uh Okay, so the ones place that the subtrahend is larger than the minuend, then I see like here, the three is smaller than the seven. I know I have to look for the next place value and borrow from it. In fact, when I borrow, I take it down by one and I have 10, right? I have an extra now 10. And so instead of, I don't put 10 here, right? And I don't put three, what do I put? And you're like, well, just put 13. I'm like, yes, that's right, because I take 3 and add 10 to it. Why? Because I took 10 from the next place value. Why did I take 10? Why didn't I take 50? Well, because 10 is our base. So when we borrow in subtraction, 10 isn't magical. 10 is just the base that we're counting in. If I was counting in base 8, I'd borrow an 8. If I was counting in base 16, I'd borrow a 16. I'm in base 10. I'm going to borrow a 10. And so now, if I do that, I get 13. And now 13 minus 7 gives me 6. And then 4 minus 0 is 4, and I get 46. Let's, let's focus on this. What, I can borrow whatever I want, but I'm borrowing the base. And that's what the subtraction says, uh, this process. It says right here, just write it vertically, start subtracting, and when that top number is smaller than the bottom one, borrow from the next place value and add the base to that value um, in the place value that you're subtracting. So let's try it in base two. It seems complex, but it's really not. So let's write this vertically, 1, 1, 0, and 11, both in base 2. I notice that here, notice that the 0 is smaller than the 1. I automatically take this 1 down in the next place value to 0. And then I take 0 and add, well, what base am I in? I'm in base 2. So I add 2 which is 2. Now what I do is I take 2 and subtract 1. And now I get a number in my base system. So 0, I took 0 again. Once again, I saw that 0 was smaller than 1. So I borrowed from my next place value and brought the 1 down to 0. But I added the base, which is 2, to 0. And I got 2 plus 0, which is 2. Two, and now 2 minus 1 is 1. So I'm going to subtract the way I usually always do. And when I borrow, all I'm going to do is not add 10, but add whatever the base is. And then I can subtract. So now I'm at 0 uh, minus 1 once again. So now I have to borrow from this next place, add 2 to get 2. And now I have 2 minus 1 is 1. And then 0 minus nothing is 0. So 110 in base 2 minus 11 in base 2 is 11 base 2. Let's try this next one. So 10, 1, 1, 0. 1, 1, 0, 1. Subtract. All right, we're set. Let's try it again. Okay, start at the 1s. I see 0 is smaller than 1. I automatically borrow from my next place value. Take it down by 1, so 0, and add the base 2, which equals 
0 plus 2 is 2. Now take 2 and subtract 1 to get 1. Now go to the next place value. 0 minus 0, perfect, that's 0. Because remember, base 2 is 0, 1, so it's in the base. And then take the next step, 1 minus 1, which is 0, perfect. And then the next one, 0 minus 1, so 0 again is smaller than 1. Take, go to the next place value and borrow. Bring it down by 1 and add 2, so you get 2, and you get 2 minus 1, which is 1. And 0 minus nothing is um, nothing, 0. So 10,110 in base 2 minus 1101 in base 2 is 1,001 in base 2. Okay, so that's that's the process. It's a little more actually simple, right, than addition. We, we thought subtraction would be a little harder, but really you don't need to know any of the base 10 numbers that correspond to the base 2 numbers. Really what we're looking at is borrowing, and whatever we borrow, we add it to that value um, in using the base, right? So even recall in base 10, the only reason why we added 10 to the next number when we borrowed is because we were counting in base 10. So when we borrow in base 2, we're going to add 2, right? In this next one, base 5, when we borrow, we're going to add 5. It's just that simple. Okay, so let's try it in base 5. So 2, 4, 1 in base 5 minus 32 in base 5. And notice I write the numbers and the place values like spaced out and very nice and columny. Okay, so now I'm going to start in the ones place. 1 minus 2, I notice that 1 is smaller than 2, so let me borrow from the next place value. Let me bring it down by 1 and add 5, because I'm in base 5, to the 1. And so 1 plus 5 is Six. Now subtract. Six minus two is four. The next thing I want to do is three minus three, which is zero, and zero is a digit in base five, so that works out, and two minus nothing is two. So 241 in base five minus 32 in base five is actually 204 in base five. All right, let's try one more. You guys are going to be numeration system pros after this. Okay. Okay. It's using the same process. And, and again, remember, if we're going to borrow from the next place value, we're borrowing 5 because we're in base 5. So 2 minus 4, notice the 2 smaller than the 4, so I have to borrow from the next place value and bring it down by 1. Now take the base 5 and add it to that number 2, right? So now 5 plus 2 is 7. Now subtract. 7 minus 4 is 3, and 3 is in base 5. Now let's subtract 1 and 3. Notice 1 is smaller than 3, so I have to borrow from the next place value. But oh no, I have 0 here. So this means I have to go and borrow not here but from here. So let me start at the 4. Let me borrow, take it down by 1, borrow the 3, add, don't add 1, add 5, right? Don't add 10, add 1, so add 5. Now that I have 5, now let me go ahead and borrow the from the 5, the 4, bring it down to 4, and then add 5, which gives you 6. And now take the 6, subtract the 3, which is 3 in base 5. Take 4 minus 4, which is 0 in base 5, and 3 minus nothing is 3. So 4022 in base 5 minus 434 in base 5 is 3033 in base 5. 
Now this one was crazy because I did that double borrowing that we're kind of used to in base 10, but not different bases, right? So let's just go over it one more time. So two was smaller than the four, so I borrowed from the next place value and added five. So five plus two is seven, so seven minus four is three. That worked out. Then I borrowed, um, uh, well, I have one minus three, and so I had one smaller than three, so I had to borrow again, but I had zero in the next place value, so I had nothing to borrow. So I have to borrow to borrow, right? So now I go to the four, and I said, let me take a group of five here. So I'll leave you with three, and I'll take five. Well, I still am working on this, right? I'm working on the one minus the three. So I'm like, okay, thanks five. I gotta borrow, I gotta borrow one of you. And so I reduce it here, take four and let me take the five. And so then five plus one will give you the six. And now we can subtract. So we have six minus three is three, four minus four is zero, and three minus three, um, three minus nothing is three. So honestly, we're just like subtracting the same as we usually would. And when we have to borrow, we just look at the base. We're like, oh, we're in base five. We'll borrow, f we'll borrow five and we'll add it to that digit that's smaller than the one below it. And then we get, we can subtract appropriately. So it looks complicated, but it's not. It's actually kind of fun. And now you are pros. You've added a subtracted, converted, symbols, everything in numeration systems.